Hey, everybody. It's the NFT Roundtable podcast by Umba Daima. It's Thursday, July 28th, 2022. And I am your host, Iris Nevins. Today, we have Thomas Pipolo, who also goes by the name of Pip. Pip launched a record label with eight artists who are launching their careers and using innovative tech like NFTs to create a whole new relationship between the label and the artist. And we're going to dig into the story of Pip as as an artist, a creator, and also the story of this record label and all the amazing work that they're doing. What's up, Pip? How are you doing today? How's it going? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. It's been a it's been an interesting week, but I'm happy to be here. Sounds good. Anything exciting going on in life right now or in your career? Yeah, I mean, stuff's been wild. Uh, yesterday, um, we had a Forbes article drop, so that was really cool. So that's been a nice little buzz for us. But um, just grinding away, getting ready to launch everything that is Cotton Candy Records. So nice. All right. All right. So tell the audience a bit about your background. You know, where are you from? Where did you grow up? And, you know, how did you get to where you are now? Yeah, so I'm from uh, Mamaroneck, New York. It's in Westchester County. It's about 25 minutes, uh, 30 minutes north of New York City. Um, I actually grew up playing sports my whole life. That was like my my passion. Um, I actually wound up playing Division One baseball. Uh, several schools, but uh, mainly UMass Amherst. And when that came to an end, thankfully, I had music that I picked up in the middle of my college baseball career as a hobby um, to, to run to. Um, it was in the middle of the pandemic when I played my last season. So it wasn't really the best time to go out and get a job, even though I had my master's degree. Couldn't get one. So I was like, you know what, let me uh, go on on music here and see what happens. Wound up signing to a, a big manager. We were writing, producing for some big artists. Um, and then we were going to bounce our own music off of that. And um, just got to the point where I was done sitting around and waiting for other people to make moves on my behalf. And I came across blockchain and NFTs, thankfully. And yeah, started that journey around, uh, I'd say this February, built out a crowdfund to launch what is Cotton Candy Records. Uh, blockchain record company. Um, we sold membership passes as NFTs to the careers of everybody that'll ever be signed to the label. Um, and yeah, we're we're rocking. <laughs> All right. What do you mean by ever? To you sold the NFTs to any everybody that will ever be signed. What does that mean? No. So we sold membership passes. So um, there was three different tiers. Uh, the middle tier, which sold out, there was only fifteen at 0.5 Ethereum, which at the time was 1500 bucks. Um, and if you bought one of those, you get two tickets for life for everybody ever signed to the label. So me, Emmy, 2AM, Carter. Um, and then gotcha. if we sign up. Gotcha. Yeah, so for the rest of the okay. time. Okay, I like that. That's amazing. So if an artist <laughs> blows up, they get the, yeah. they have those tickets forever. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to hire, they're going to have to hire somebody to resell those tickets because, uh, I mean, <laughs> It's crazy the value. I mean, even if you don't, even if none of us blow up, which there's a high chance that one of us do, um, the return is is large. I mean, if we just go out and be media level artists, you're gonna be yeah. able to make your. No, that's a lot of value. You know, yeah. I mean, some people pay a thousand dollars, you know, for two tickets to one concert. You know, depending yeah, on crazy. who it is. Yeah, you know, I would I would drop a thousand dollars in a second for Beyonce. So. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly hopefully we have um, beyonce on our label <laughs> <laughs> but that's pretty cool okay so you sold membership passes how many did you sell yeah so we sold out of our our middle tier which was called the gold passes those are 15 and then we've sold around 50 of the bottom uh, which is silver and that gives you one hit per year per artist for forever so um yeah we're still open on that we're still i think there's like a hundred or so left of the silver but yeah we're rocking with that open um we did twenty thousand dollars in the first day which was crazy that's um, amazing and yeah, How- it's been open since then and, and went up when did you launch it uh march 25th i believe 
Okay. And, and how much have you generated total since then? I think around, I think around $35,000. Um, I'm not, it, it changes every day cause people buy them, but I think around $35,000 and we were able to use that money to, um, fund a lot of things moving forward. A lot of people's music, including my debut EP, um, which I launched a month and a half or two months later, we sold 200 copies of that as NFTs, which is crazy with a uh, vault. So wow. we're on, so- yeah. And we did, we did a launch party and, and the people who had the tickets, we did a launch party for my EP and people who bought the NFTs got open bar, free access, the whole nine, treating them like, uh, like kings and queens for the rest of time. Wow. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. love it. How much did you generate from the album drop? Um, so we sold 200 or so at $25. So I think it's around like five grand. I mean, it, it fluctuates with Solana or whatever, but I think around five uh-huh. or six grand crazy as a up and coming independent artist. Like nobody's doing that. Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah. I've definitely, um, been able to watch the journey of, of a number of music artists, Latasha being one of them. You know, I remember when she was first dropping her pieces and they were selling for maybe a few hundred bucks, maybe yeah. a few thousand, you know, like it's Heno as well. It's, it's, it's a, it's a process and you're definitely yeah. starting on the right foot. Like you're going in the yeah. right direction, which is great. Yeah. No, uh, it's def- so, say that again. And no, I said it's definitely a journey. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and I, I think what's also exciting is that you, in launching this record label, you also have this whole ecosystem that you're building around yourself and these other artists, which, you know, is, is, is going to be, is going to be huge for all of you long term. Yeah. Talk no. a- yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Talk about uh, talk about the label and how you've designed it to be different from traditional labels. Yeah, so the biggest thing that that makes us different is that uh, our artists are keeping eighty percent of the pie, and the label is taking twenty. And in the normal industry, it's the opposite way around completely. The labels get eighty, the artists get twenty, and uh, we're able to do that because blockchain and nfts allow us to actually have a product that can make us money right the, the way the normal industry works now is i mean i go play a show and i say hey guys go stream my music on apple or spotify and press play and i get 0.004 cents uh, and now i can go play a show and say hey guys go buy my debut ep as an nft you can pay with cash or whatever and i get 25 bucks and then all of a sudden we're talking about like consistent income coming in. Right. And, and that's really what allows the label to shift completely, like flip um, the economic model around. And, and yeah, it's, it's wild. It reminds me a lot. I mean, not that I knew what the old industry was like, but studying up on the old industry, it's like it was back in the day. I mean, people used to sell millions of copies of of their album. So there's a lot of money (laughs) in, in, selling the actual like piece of music and that's coming back so yeah so it seems like what you're saying and i'm not i'm by no means an expert on the music industry but it seems like the argument that labels make is the reason they take 80 percent is because it requires so much upfront investment and capital into the artist in order for them to actually um, generate revenue. Right. And, and so they have to recoup those costs and also make profit. But it seems like what you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, is that because of NFTs and web three and the mechanics of that, it allows you to generate revenue for the artists on way lower costs um and so there's no need to to recoup all this money that's been spent because the nfts allow you to distribute easier cheaper faster etc yeah no it's it's that's that's definitely right i mean the biggest thing is is that like the normal labels now i mean right it's the same thing for them if the artists aren't making that much money they're not making a lot of money so i mean a million streams on spotify is four thousand dollars or something like that so 
if you do the math, I mean, you need a lot of streams um, to make any kind of money, including the label. So what does that mean? You need a lot of marketing dollars to get, I mean, to get millions and millions of streams, it takes a lot of marketing dollars and there's not a lot of return on that money. So yeah, that's why, I mean, I, I they shouldn't take 80% no matter what, but that's why the deals are the way that they are. Um, and, and the other thing is, is that it's interesting because the streaming platforms are kind of working hand in hand with the labels. And really the only funding mechanism is, for artists is to go to a label. So they're willing to, I guess, give up 80% of their careers. Um, it's a little messed up the whole way, the way the whole industry is, is structured right now, but it definitely is switching um, because you don't need thousands and thousands or millions of fans to make money now. You just need a couple hundred super fans, quote unquote. Right, right. Love that. Yeah, I think a lot of people are not fully comprehending the whole concept around uh, the whole, the fact that for specifically music artists and NFTs, it's really a, it's kind of a different ball game from like digital artists and these other artists, because for music artists, you guys are used to building your careers off of massive followings. It's like a massive following is required for you to actually make a living. Yeah. Um, whereas if you're a digital artist, you can have clients and you can, you know, sell prints and things like that, and you can make a decent living. Um, but for a music artist, it's like, you have to be really, really popular or be touring like nonstop and like sacrificing yeah. yourself in order to make a living. But now it's like, you can make a living without having to have such a huge audience because people yeah. can support you directly. And I think that's really huge. And I think this, like this, this fight for fame and this, uh, you know, is, is also probably kind of really unhealthy anyway. So I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? No, it's, it's, it's an amazing point. Like at the very least, like, I mean, what we're trying to do myself and, and the artists on the label, like we're all trying to be major, major artists, but at the end of the day, like if, even if you're just a, a medium level or don't have the desire to go freaking play MSG one day, you can make a living now if you do it properly, just playing shows and selling your little album that you make every year or two years or whatever, and make a decent living, um, which is beautiful, right? Like if you're doing something you love, that's what it, what it means. Like that's, what's most valuable for me doing something that I love. Um, and, and blockchain and NFTs are really providing people the chance to do that. Amazing. So tell, um, let's talk about some of the artists that are on the label. So of course we yep. have you and what kind of music do you make? Yeah. So definitely pop, but it's a blend of, uh, a lot of different things. I, I like country music. I like old school, like Frank Sinatra. I like pop, obviously hip hop. So it's just a blend of whatever comes out at the time, um, which makes it a little unique, I think. Um, and then, and then, yeah, I'll go through the rest of the, the artists. Um, we have 2AM, who's my closest collaborator. He was signed with me to the manager. Um, he's a DJ producer. He makes everything from EDM to hip hop. He can do some country. Um, we have Carter Smith. He's a country singer down in Nashville. He, I played baseball with him actually in college. He just moved back to Nashville. He's getting ready to uh, burst onto the scene down there. And I think it's going to make a massive splash in the country music scene, especially being one of the first Web3 country artists. Uh, we have Emmy, who's also down in Nashville, but she's more of a pop R&B. Um, great writer, amazing voice. Who else do we have? We have um, Blix, who's a hip-hop artist. We have LQ, who's a hip-hop artist out of New York. Um, and then we have singer, songwriter, producers, such as Chosen. We have Jake Eckhouse, Ali Sumro. We have the, the whole, the list goes on and on. So we have a whole freaking pack team of, of great, great, great talent that I like to call it like this. This was just completely made up by me, like the best secret in the music industry, because the best kept secret in the music industry, because whenever anybody hears anything from us or, or really gets to know us, they're like, how aren't any of you guys like doing it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> That's exciting. I, um, I wish we could play some music. I, we, I should have planned this ahead of time. 
All good. Uh, but 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 feel free if you have some speakers nearby or something to to play yeah. some music. <laughs> um, next time, we'll put some links in the in the post when when we post awesome. it on on the different platforms. So another question. I'm curious in terms of the artists that you chose, are these, how did you, what was the process for selecting the artists on the label? Yeah. So, so everybody that's on our label is people are people that we've worked with for the, over the past uh, year and a half or so. Um, we were just a tight, like tight knit group. Um, so it wasn't like we had to go search for anybody. We've literally been writing and working together for a year and a half, trying to make it. And we were all like, you know what, we're fed up with the normal, way the normal industry works like let's just go all in on this so everybody was bought bought in and we're rocking okay what do you think about um what do you think about atlanta's music scene and i'm wondering because this is where i'm at and i'm wondering if we can get you down here um <laughs> to connect with some artists here and, sure. and have them hear about your what you're doing yeah, why not? I'd, I'd come down there. I actually have cousins in um, East Cobb. And uh, yeah, I, I've been down there. Or Mar Yeah, they're in Marietta, which is East Cobb County or Cobb County. I don't know. But I go down there. I've been down there a bunch. Um, I'd love to come back down there and play a couple shows or work with some artists. I know the hip hop scene is crazy down there. Um, so I would love to come down. There, but I know we have, um, I've heard some pop like stuff popping up down there. No pun intended. Down in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring the pop flavor yeah i'll bring the pop flavor you know I, i've been like talking to our hip-hop artists and i'm like i kind of want to go back to that like 09 era of like uh like uh verse chorus verse chorus like jay-z and or like eminem and rihanna and that kind of like thing i feel like that I needs miss to come it. yeah i miss it so much <laughs> honestly i i love atlanta i really yeah. do yeah. what's but the a lot, like? of the, a lot of it sorry yeah. go ahead no, I was going to ask, like, what is it like down there right now? What's going on? And I mean, I feel like a lot of the hip hop music is starting to sound very much the same, which I try mm -hmm. to steer guys away from. Like, I feel like we're more of the guys that our two hip hop artists are very like older sounding, like classic, like Jay-Z or, or something like that. So yeah, I want to hear what it's like. Yeah, I'm not very tapped into the music scene here, but I do. I am connected to a few artists who are. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I think. You know, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask around and see what they say. I, I find the way that I tap into music is usually by going out and being social. Yeah. And yeah. when I go out in Atlanta, I feel like a lot of the clubs, the, the like Atlanta clubs, um, that play a lot of hip hop, the music I just don't really yeah. kind of vibe to that much. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it is, but it it's very grungy. It's very South, but it is like, like you said, there isn't much mixtures of genres. And so a lot of the music sounds the same versus hip hop that I'm used to where it's like rap and vote, you know, pop yeah. R and B all kind of like mixed in together. Yeah. Sometimes some electronic, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, I love, I've, I love out of hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also, I'm originally from Miami. So oh, nice. when I go, when I go out in Miami, it's usually a really great fusion of yeah. all sorts of, you know, genres. You got the Latin, the African, Caribbean, hip hop, pop, everything. And they do a really amazing job at a lot of the clubs down there of like mixing everything together. Yeah, it's like and a here, yeah. Exactly. And here it's like electronic over here you know, this over there is like very, it's almost, it's very segregated. Yeah. 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 No. And, and what's funny is I I've gone back, I go back and forth to Nashville a bunch and over the past two years, it's blending. Obviously it's known as a country music scene, but it's blending into everything, which I think overall music is. So I think Atlanta will probably catch up to that, that wave. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, it's a. Uh, I think we'll see it, especially because the the city itself is changing. You yeah. know, we have we have the the tech industry. Excuse me, is booming here, and so um, there's a lot of tech companies coming here. There's a lot of 
uh, unfortunately, a lot of gentrification, but also a lot of opportunity that's yeah. coming here. Um, so I think we're, we're definitely going to see that impact the music industry and, and people's sure. music tastes are going to change. It's so cool. It's amazing how that like impacts culture and, and ultimately music. Like it's so weird to think about. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, all right. So let's talk about, uh, let's, let's do some fun questions before we wrap up. So the first one is what inspired you to create cotton candy skies and specifically like what was the moment where you were like because a lot of people have ideas yeah right yeah. what was the moment where you're like i'm gonna actually do this yeah yeah i'd say it was um the moment the record label was like okay i gotta run with this was <laughs> When I, I just, so my whole family had COVID and I didn't, and I was locked in my, I had a, I was locked in my room. It was reverse quarantine. And, uh, I just, I just buckled down. and was like researching why other NFT projects were working. Like why is Board API Club selling for X amount of money? I was very ignorant at the time. And once I like really dove into it and learned that it was just a business, normal business, just it started digitally. I was like, wait, like, why can't we why can't we do this exact same thing, but just music? It was literally right when I got, got done with one of those videos. I was like, we're rocking with this. Um, and then when I was developing the name, I don't know, it just <laughs> Cotton Candy just randomly came to me. And and uh, my EP was called Cotton Candy Skies because I, I thought that was one of the best songs that I, I've ever written. So I was like, you know what? Let's just make it kind of flow. And Cotton Candy just seems cool. So we rocked with it. Have you always been a kind of a doer like someone that doesn't you know launches initiatives and projects and stuff yeah i mean it's it's the athlete mentality that i bring to music and it's also my father's an entrepreneur so it's like kind of in my blood i i don't do well waiting around for other people to to do stuff for me um i'd rather just do it myself and and put together a team that can execute my vision and whatnot so yeah, once it once I saw the opportunity, I was like, "This is not. I'm not letting this pass by." Because I I just knew it was going to be a good idea. Mm -hmm. What's your vision for Cotton Candy Skies, and and what do you want its role to be in in society and in the in the music industry? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, initially, and this is our short term focus. It's like build a foundation from which. I can launch my own career and everybody that I work so closely with that I call friends, good friends can have a fruitful career in the music industry all based off of what we're doing now and the technology. But long term, I mean, like I really like my team and I really want to shake up the industry. I mean, it's been such a long time that every that this whole industry has been kind of backwards. Um, and, and to put it nicely, there's so many artists that are getting taken advantage of and so many talent, more importantly, so many talented people that don't even get a chance, a remote chance to do any of this because they get into bad deals or they're just simply like, I can't even make a living doing it. Like what, I can't even be a decent artist and make a living. So I'd say in the long term, I, I, I think I underestimate how powerful it is what we're doing for the overall like music industry and, and artists like all over. I actually had a friend the other day telling me like, do you realize like what you're doing for, for other artists? And I, I just, it's hard to really comprehend it when you're in the thick of it. So yeah, I'd say that's our overall like impact, but short term, it's just build a foundation for us to have a career in music. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then what, uh, what is the biggest highlight of your music career? Yeah. In, or, in or outside of web three, it doesn't have to be specific to web three. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is Web3 because it was the launch party for my uh, my EP uh, in May in New York City. I mean, that was so damn cool to get everybody in the same room who had invested or just normal fans um, coming together because we were able to execute this, this vision. Um, and it was just an amazing, amazing night. The performance was awesome, but like the energy and the venue and how we did it all ourselves, it was just such a cool night definitely one of the best nights of my life for sure amazing 
And um, lastly, before we close out, what would you say to artists that want to get involved in NFTs and they don't know where to start? Yeah, I'd say first things first is I would just start on YouTube kind of um, learning what's going on. Just literally type in my my guy was Gary V. I would just type in Gary V NFTs and he breaks it down in such a simple way. And there's a lot of videos of him discussing music and NFTs specifically. Um, so I'd start there. And then um, I would say get on Twitter. Twitter is like where everything lives in this space. And I mean, you could DM me or anybody on my team. And, and usually other people are very in the space are very receptive to questions and whatnot. So don't be afraid to ask anything and, and just jump in. That's the biggest thing because that's the only way you really learn. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Definitely learning by doing is the best best strategy here which is why people shouldn't start out trying to do something like really crazy yeah. right because you, you kind of need some room to experiment a little wait, bit wait. uh yeah you know like make sure you you know how to set up a wallet properly first yeah. and all that stuff. Some maneuver with it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i've definitely heard of uh definitely had some artists go through like losing money or sending money the wrong place and yeah. paying paying crazy fees because they like made small mistakes the first time around which is very normal and yeah. it's okay no for sure you gotta i mean you just gotta get your feet wet and, and you'll really understand it by doing that that's really how i learned amazing well i'm um I'm proud of you and I, I'm, I'm excited for you. I think that what you're doing is is really cool. I think this is one of the, the cooler projects that I've heard about. Um, one more question, actually, before we yeah. go. I just thought of this. Marketing. So a lot of yeah. people struggle with actually selling their NFTs. Um, they may think that, well, all these other people are selling their NFTs, so all I have to do is create it and put it out there and if people, if my art is good, people are going to buy it and it doesn't always work that way. So what was your strategy? It, it never works that way. And, and I know that because I had to market myself as a, as an athlete. I mean, it doesn't matter how good you are. You have to get on and get, send those emails to coaches and, and tell them to watch your video and stuff like that. So it simply is just a grind of, of getting on Twitter and whatnot and just, even your normal fans and fr friends, family, be like, Hey, this is what's going on. This is what I'm doing. Um, this is why you should support. Um, here's the value that you're going to be getting and just interacting with anybody that you can. I mean, it's, it's nothing short of, of just, it's a grind. You really have to do outreach. And if you're on Twitter, reach out to somebody and then take them to zoom, talk to them, not face to face, but through, <laughs> through the screen and whatnot. Um, that's really how we made all of our connections and, how we continue to do it. I don't care how big we get. That's really going to be what we have to do forever. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely having a clear marketing strategy is, is still important. The NFTs Huge. don't eliminate that. <laughs> no, no, you still, have, you still need a lot of talent and you still need to know how to, how to sell product. I mean, it really, if you, and if you don't know how to do it, try to find somebody that's, uh, willing to to join you and and who's good at it like i i have many areas that i'm not good at and that's why i have so many people around me that are good at what they do so it's a big it's a big thing cool well thank you so much pip for joining us today it. uh excited to post your your episode and anybody who's listening in please go ahead and and check out our website nftroundtablepodcast.com Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Turn on notifications. Uh, uh, definitely subscribe to our um, podcast on the website, and we will get you notified for when this episode. Um, we'll get you notified with all of the different links and so forth uh, for for Pip and all of his projects. <laughs>